The following is a Stars and Strikes doubles rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Stars and Strikes Doubles. Stars and Strikes Doubles is sponsored in part by Summerville Lumber. Bright Stumbles is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Cattle and Bowling Association. And now your host, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Championship week continues here on the Winds. Hi, everybody. Once again, Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy now from the Londonderry Bowling Center. Stars and Strikes doubles moving into the championship uh, week, and this will be our last regular match of the season before we move into the Tournament of Champions on both shows next Sunday. That's exactly right. Seems like we just started yesterday, and <laughs> another season's gone by, and I know these two teams are looking forward to this week. All right, let's talk about our two teams for this week. Great story developing. If you uh, haven't been with us the last several weeks, our number five seeded team has moved into the championship match from Pepperell, Mass, Bill Hart, and his partner from Dover, New Hampshire, Mark Arnold. Okay, I'm going to say this one more time. <laughs> uh, Billy Hart comes in averaging 128. The roll-off score, which was eons ago, 666, and uh, Mark Arnold at 121 and 661. We take 10 bowlers for Stars and Strikes doubles out of the final roll-off uh, when the qualifications are held. Bill Hart and Mark Arnold finish 9th and 10th, and now here they are in the championship match. They will face our number one seeded team from Exeter, New Hampshire, Norm Bork, his partner from East Boston Mass, Bruno DeFeo. Okay, and uh, Norm Bork's roll score 699, and uh, Bruno is in at 692. And so this will be uh, their opportunity to try and defend that number one spot. They've been watching uh, Bill Hart and uh, Mark Arnold take apart the competition the last three weeks. Now they'll get their turn to try and win this thing. The winning team goes into the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Also a little uh, matter of prize money as well. $800 to the winning team today, $400 to the losing team. And we're going to be back with three strings of doubles bowling to settle it all here on the wins right after these messages. Stay with us. All right, once again, three wins in a row for our number five seeded team, Bill Hart and Mark Arnold. They have knocked off in order the number four, three, and two seeded teams. So now they take a shot at number one, Norm Bork and Bruno DeFeo. For the fourth week in a row, Bill Hart will get our match started here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. And remember last week in the semifinals, he stepped up in this spot and threw a double strike, and that was an indicator of what was to come. <laughs> that certainly was. But uh, you can throw all those scores out and we start anew. Nothing new for him. He's back on the head pin again and look at the two pins spin around. <laughs> two, four, and nine. Piece of wood out in front. Should help. Yes. Last week, Hart and Arnold had 16 marks, and they threw a 4-12. Scores have been increasing every week. 347 their first week, 359, and then 412 last week. This time, too good on the head pin. Too sharp, as they say. One, five, and nine out of there. Three fill on the spare. Spare eagle plus that eight pin in the back. Nice out. Very nice out. Excellent. Worth another look, in fact. You cut the two and the three. How can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Norm Bork now, the overall top finisher in this roll-off to qualify on Stars and Strikes doubles. Norm with that 699 that 
Dan mentioned earlier. Also want to correct that Norm is from Haverhill, Mass. I believe I said Exeter, New Hampshire earlier. It's Haverhill, Mass. And Norm making his fifth appearance here on Stars and Strikes. First time this year for Norm. Last time he was with us. Get to that in a second as he finishes up with the 10 box. Last time Norm was with us was uh, in last year's doubles tournament of champions. His partner was Ed Emerson. They were the number four seed going in and they lost their first match to Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre. Light on the head pin that time for Norm. The three, the seven, the nine, and the ten. And all kinds of help in between. Three pins. Got possibilities if he can get on the three pin. Ooh, bounce just a little bit. Nine bucks. Now Mark Arnold. A little off target to the right. And the 10. Now uh, there is a sign of a confident bowler. Instead of going after the 6-10 in the corner, went after the head pin and got all three of them for the 10 box. A little later on in the show, we'll flash up those scores for you of the teams that have already qualified for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions to give you an idea what scores these guys will be shooting at. As we come down the stretch in this one, spare in the fourth for Mark Arnold. And there's a lot of thoroughbreds there. Look <laughs> at that lineup. Some real tough teams. Should be an interesting tournament of champions. Don't forget, tournament of champions, the five-week series starts next Sunday here on the Winds at 12 noon with our first match in singles, the number five and number six qualifiers, followed by the first match in the doubles tournament of champions. That match will be Paul St. Pierre and Steve Reno against someone. We can't tell you who yet until this match is over. This is Bruno DeFeo now for his first two boxes of the match. Bruno with the 10. Bruno's been here a couple times on the wins this season already. Here in doubles, he paired with Steve Vadney. They won a match and then were eliminated in the semifinals. Bruno also qualified as a number two seed in singles back in the fall and lost a very tough two-pin match to Peter Flynn. So he's trying to break through into the win column and get into his first tournament of champions. If I remember correctly, he had a chance to beat Peter too. He hit two marks the last two frames and both of them which we thought, he thought he had them, I thought he had them, but and that's where he came out with one of the best quotes I've ever heard. Luck comes with experience. <laughs> I always remember that. <laughs> Bork and DeFeo still looking for that first mark. Bill Hart will Fill the spare left by his partner. Yeah. Oh, big ball there. Nine, Phil. He'll look at the seven pin. For a moment, it looked like he might have had a five, seven, ten, but the way Bill's throwing the ball, he is just 
carrying the extra pin, it seems, every time. Last week, unofficially, uh, without going back to review the tape, we had him on the head pin every box that he threw. And 62 in the fifth, plus a ball. <laughs> mercy, mercy, mercy. <laughs> Norm Bork came up to us before this match started and said, hey, do we have to wear the dark blue shirts? <laughs> Bill and Mark, of course, have been wearing the red shirts throughout the series, and they've beaten all the blue teams so far. Anything, change momentum. Step out of the batter's box or change the color of your shirts. <laughs> Don't let anybody tell you bowlers aren't superstitious. <laughs> Norm with the... 3-6-10 along with the 4 on the left. Norm and his wife Patricia live in Haverhill as we mentioned. Two children, Christopher and Jennifer. Norm works at AT&T. There's a lot of his uh, bowling right in Haverhill at the Pilgrim Lanes. Lane 29 now. I mean, Norm really gets a severe hand twist when he releases the ball. Really turns it over. It's the color of his bowling balls, too, where you can really pick it out. Kind of swirly type, and ball really turns over on the way down. Oh, no. Tough break there on the 3 5 6. So, just like the last couple weeks, the team of Hart and Arnold are. Getting out of the gate quick. You know, the first week, they had to come from behind. They That's were right. trailing most of that first match, but the last two weeks, and here in the early going this week, they've gotten off to the lead. Wow. <laughs> and it's catching. Solid nine-pin drop by Mark Arnold. Leaves That's just the seven. That's three straight nine drops and three straight single pin conversions for spares. Well, if you uh, were going to be critical of anything that this team did last week, shooting a 412, it was the fact that they missed a couple of single pins. Exactly. And they haven't missed any so far here today. No, oh, and there won't be one to shoot at that time. Unbelievable. If we can go back. If people kept the tapes, if we could see Mark Arnold the first week on the <laughs> show, his very first box, his very first box, we'll have to ask him. <laughs> he had a three box, That's I believe. That's right. Yeah. I wasn't even going to bring it up. But three box. I'm sure he wants to forget well, it. I'm sure it's okay to bring it up now. <laughs> <laughs> throwing strikes and spares all the time. But he is just a totally different person. Bruno DeFeo and Norm Bork hoping to stop the bleeding here a little bit. Looking for their first mark. The one and the two left for Bruno. No. Well, as with all sports, we spend an awful lot of time uh, when you analyze these various events and look at them. You spend an awful lot of time because it becomes so evident after a while at this level that confidence plays such a big part in it, and it's all mental. And when you've got a team that is on a roll like these guys are, guys are right now, talking about Bill Hart and Mark Arnold, especially coming off the big score last week, they just feel like they can do no wrong. That's right. And you've got a team coming in knowing they're on a roll. The reputation is now all of a sudden there. Plus, they're wearing the blue shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and on and on it goes. <laughs> And oftentimes when a team gets off to this great start, as they are 120 in the eighth, the other team starts to press a little bit, and it's a little tougher. They had a couple spare leaves, some they hit. This one they went by. Another nine bucks. Still looking for their first mark. Now all of a sudden the lead is 46 and climbing. Bill Hart now, five marks in a row for the team. Four spares and a strike. A little full in the head pin, tried to cross over in the one, two, left himself the three, six, ten on the right, four, seven on the left, working on a strike. 
Six, Six. Phil. Takes the two in the corner. 134 through nine. Last week's opening game, 145, I believe. Right you are. 45. But the difference was they only had a 15 pin lead with that 145. This week, the lead will be considerably higher, it appears. Bill's got to be feeling pretty good about his chances on this one. Three, five, six, and ten. No, he knew it. Ten box, one forty-four. Slipping. <laughs> so if Norm Bork were to strike out here in the first game, they'd still be trailing by one. Uh, by ten, rather. I don't know about striking out, but he certainly would like to put a couple marks up. Well, There's gets a break good. there. Kicking the two pin out, leaves himself just the six ten. He's gonna take a deep breath and relax and just say, just let me give it a mark. Don't try not to press throwing at the ball, at the pins. And there it is. It's the first one. Now the fill ball. Spins it in there. It'll be a five. And another makeable spare in the three, five, six, nine, ten. Pieces of wood in behind the three and the five and also to the uh, left. Catch that three pin. Yes. Well, with any kind of a fill here on this mark in the 10th, you'll shave the lead under 40, which I guess is only good if you've been down by more than 50. <laughs> but that's the way you got to look at it. you got to do it a little at a time. That's right. You, you just can't expect to get it back in one ball, but certainly I'm saving themselves by going spare five, spare in a last two from the lead going any higher. Uh-oh. Gets only four on the fill there with a 103. And the lead will be 41 after one game. Championship match. One of these teams moves into the Tournament of Champions next week. And we'll be back with game two in a minute. All right, as promised, here's a look at the five teams that have already made it into the Tournament of Champions. As we mentioned, uh, one thing that we know is that Paul St. Pierre and Steve Reno will be in the match next week. We just don't know if uh, their opponents will be Chuck Godzik and Peter Flynn or perhaps the winners of this match today. We won't know that until this one is all settled. And then, of course, we'll move on. It'll be a five-week series, as it always is. Added prize money. Of course, it all begins next Sunday at 12 noon with the beginning of the singles tournament of champions here on the win. So make sure to make plans, either uh, live or on tape, to be with us. Get those VCRs warmed up. Five weeks, tournament of champions starting next week. Wow, five, seven, ten. Right, can he fit the ball between the pin and the five pin? That wood in the five pin? We'll see. Pretty good try. Oh, got the seven and the ten out of there instead. The ten box. Trailing by 41. Three, five, six for Bruno. Mm. 
No. Things are going tough. The team of Bork and DeFeo right now. Seem to buy a mark. Couple of tens for Bruno. Mark Arnold will start this second game for the team of Hart and Arnold. Mark directing traffic. He wants that wood to stay on the plate. One of them is going to roll off. Three, nine, ten. I guess when you're going well, you feel that you can just control all that, too. <laughs> you know. Ooh, that close to another spare. Well, if he had had that other piece of wood, it might have gone. Let's see. Right in front of it. Back with a nine drop. Shooting now at the seven pin. What else is new? <laughs> a choice here, play the wood or the right at the pin. Not wood. so confident that they couldn't play it that way. I was gonna say maybe there wasn't a choice. <laughs> it's going wood all the way. So I always had a chance of capping the wood trying to go right at the pin, so that probably was a smart choice to take him. Converting the seven pin. And no Bork porches, uh, punches right through the center. Not the spread eagle, but not very easy either. Gave it a shot. Two four out of there, and he's still left with a three six. Still looking for a mark in the second game. In fact, they're looking for a bunch of marks, being down by 41. On lane 29, again a little full. This time you get a better break on it, though. Leaves just the two pin. Thought maybe the four was going to fall forward for the strike, but not to be. Uh oh. Mm. When things aren't going your way. And then, of course, you can drop the ball in the third ball and still get it for the 10. Eyes closed, anything you want, <laughs> it's going to go down the third ball, make you feel real good about missing it with the second. Well, Billy Hart working on a spare in the second, put up by Mark Arnold. He missed the head pin. <laughs> Headlines, Bill Hart misses head pin with first ball. Drops eight. Yes, <laughs> leaves himself another spare leave. The one and the eight, one and the nine. No trouble there. That's eight marks in 11 frames for the team of Hart and Arnold. Back on it. Six on the right, four, seven in the corner on the left. Piece of wood in front of the four seven, also one to the left of the six pin. Good choice here. I don't know if I'll probably go four seven, try to snap the wood. No. Hmm. Oh, nice ten. Snapping that wood over there. We'll take a break. Almost at the halfway point. The team of Hart and Arnold. They're still on a roll. Can they keep it going all the way to the title? We'll see. Bruno DeFeo from East Boston, Mass. Works at Fleet Bank. 
a regular at Central Park Lanes. On the head pin, a little light, but shoot at this, the 3, 5, 6, and 10. They've had the 3, 5, 6 to shoot at quite a few times. Maybe we stick the 10 pin in there. Probably get it. Nope. And there it is for the 10. Maybe the thing that's going to be the toughest for Bill Hart and Mark Arnold right now is just to maintain their concentration, not to let up. Oh, there's a strike. That'll help. Bruno DeFeo, first strike for the team, his first mark of any kind. And that's what they need. They need something to try and light the fire. Now Mark Arnold. With the answer, almost. Leaves the five pin. Got to watch that wood. It's going to roll in front of the five. Yeah, he's going to have a clear shot at it. And that's all he needs. <laughs> Halfway through the match, Hart and Arnold with nine marks. They had a run of five marks in a row in the first game that helped stake them to this big lead. Four horsemen left, six on, a f on the, s uh, yeah, easy for me to say, six <laughs> on the spare. One, two, four, seven left, trying to make it two in a row. Box. Lead now 63, but Norm Burke's working on a strike. If you're looking for a halfway checkpoint, 15 boxes through the match, Hart and Arnold with 215. Bork and DeFeo 152. Norm on a strike. On the inside, oh, almost got it. That close for a spare. Nine on the strike. Another look, playing it inside and wrapped that piece of wood right around the four pin. Pinning well, only left one pin standing, but they need marks. Oh. Seven pin jumped right up off the plate. Remains standing though. The wood may make this shot interesting, although he's gonna lose a piece, it appears, yep. Well, the front piece is angled toward the channel. You got two pieces there, so they may help it from coming back out. Now whether it's enough to carry the nine and then the seven, we'll, we'll see. Yes! yes! Great shot, the ball actually. Right down on the top of the seven pin it looked like. Watch the ball. <laughs> oh, it came in front. Yep. Just clipped it. Billy Hart for his seventh and eighth frames. Second game. Wow, strike in the seventh. Hold that one a little bit. Held on to that one, lofted it out further on the lane, which usually means you're holding on to the ball a little longer than normal. He's working on a strike, however. <laughs> Dude, they're not going to hit 100 till the eighth frame in this game. 105 through eight. Well, setting themselves up, though, when, you know, we're a long ways from being over, but they have a 58 pin advantage. We'll start looking at those scores. Remember the, the low score is 349, which really has no bearing now. It's the team, one of the teams that will be in the first week, next week. That would be 
um, St. Pierre and Renault. The next three scores, six, 365, 381, 390, and then of course the 407 sitting at the top of the list. And I'll tell you who one of our interested spectators is today. That's Joe Ashline, who's one of the holders of that high score at 407 with his partner Gary Carrington, here to check out the action and see if their score will stay safe or not. Just the five fill on the mark for Bruno DeFeo, the nine in the ninth. When you're carrying the extra pin to get six, you know that you're in trouble. Things are not yeah. going your way. Yeah, it's just not your day. Three, seven, nine, ten. And the eight. A 110, a two game total of 213 for Bork and DeFeo. Things real interesting if Mark Arnold could put one or two marks up here. Already at about 125 clip. Well, they're going to be well within striking distance of that 407, Absolutely. regardless. But uh, you're right, it could make it a little less pressure filled if you put at least one mark up here in the final two. Not that time. I dare say Joe Ashline will stay here till the end of this match. <laughs> and that's a big difference, finishing number one or number two seed, because number one seed, you're guaranteed, the team is guaranteed $600 prize money. And of course, an automatic shot at the $1,500 first prize. The uh, number two seed is guaranteed $400 as a team. And of course, you'd have to win two matches mm. from the number three spot to get in. Or rather, from the number two spot to get in. You have to win two matches. So you're only guaranteed the $400, plus you have to win the extra match. So 2 4 left for Mark. No. Although, don't be talking too much to Norm Bork and Bruno DeFeo about the advantages of being no, the number one well, seed. I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this. 53 pins down. You've you got to figure they got to throw a 150-something game and then hope that uh, the other team falters. Well, the lead, 55, 268 to 213. Hart and Arnold, 10 frames away from a clean sweep of this series here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Don't go away. Bill Hart to lead off game three for the team of Hart and Arnold with that big lead. Just can't get too comfortable, that's all. All the action here on Stars and Strikes Doubles brought to you in part by Somerville Lumber. Get it right the first time. Go to Somerville Lumber for all your home improvement needs. A seven bucks. I say that with some shock in my voice. Yeah. Key to this third game is to get that mark up, the first mark, especially right away. It seems to loosen the whole team up. I oh, need some help. Well, a two in the eight. The two pins we remove when we have half Worcester left. Easy when there's ten pins up there. Or so it seems. Oh, he got the eight and left the two. <laughs> Coming in from that angle. He's able to sneak in and get the back pin. And then the ten box. Well, when you're in this position, all you can hope for is an opening. It's there now for Norm Bork and Bruno DeFeo. It'll be Norm Bork to lead off this third game. The, uh, both teams 
electing to keep the same rotation. Of course, for Hart and Arnold, it's a question of not wanting to change things. They've been using the same rotation since three weeks ago. Well, Norm chops out the two pin. And the eight. Well, he hit the same pin as his object pin, the two pin. Only this time he knocked down eight. That pin in front seems to be in play. We'll see. Cindy system going down to check it. And it's not in play. Oh. I guess we couldn't see the Deadwood line like we thought we could. Well, I don't think I ever said I could see it. I think you <laughs> said you could see it. <laughs> nope. Norm just spun that one right by. And the 10. Mark Arnold. Well, the 5, 7, 8, 10 with three pieces of playable wood. By the way, we uh, neglected to do the math, or at least announce the math, going into this third game. Should Hart and Arnold hold on and win this match, they would need a 140. 140 is what they would need to uh, take over the top spot. Three, six, seven. All of a sudden, we're getting an extra pin up there for this team. We're not used to that. Trying to split the three and a six. Inside. Nope. Should uh, Bill and Mark or Norm and Bruno, if they should come back and win this match, whichever team wins it, should they end up tied with one of the scores that we currently have in our tournament in the champions bracket we would have a one string roll off prior to the appropriate program in order to settle the tie and before everyone calls me and asks me why we do that rather than set up with high singles is that Paul is a here <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. You don't have to bring him back. Right. The uh, the business of using the high singles to break the ties in the roll-off is simply a, uh, a housekeeping matter more than anything else because in the final roll-offs there are often three or four different shifts of bowlers that compete. For instance, in the finals of this particular event, we had 80 bowlers in Rochester for the final roll-off and uh, bowling in several different shifts. If bowlers become tied, it becomes very difficult to get them to come back and settle the tie in person. So all the bowlers are aware going in that those high scores that they throw are very important because they can count double. Just ask Mark Arnold. Yes, right. Who got into this ladder on the second tiebreaker, the second game tiebreaker, and now is in the finals and six boxes away from getting into the Tournament of Champions Amazing. with his partner, Bill Hart. They've got six boxes to go. We'll come back with it on Stars and Strikes Doubles right after these messages. Don't go away. Bill Hart. Box five, game three. 
Is this the longest stretch in some time without them having a mark? I would. Oh, easily, yeah. yeah. Seven boxes now going back to the second game. One, two, seven, ten. If they're thinking about the win already and looking ahead to what the final score will be, they need more than 100 pins in the last six boxes in order to overtake Joe Ashline and Gary Carrington. They'd need a 140 for that. They would need 123 to overtake Fuller and Vadney. And another open frame, just an eight box. Four horsemen left and the nine pin in the back. Piece of wood in between the two and the four. Oh yes, nice shot. Breaking the drought, that's mark number 11. We were talking right before the breakdown about how Mark Arnold got here. He had a 661 to tie for 10th. 10th and final spot. He was tied with Dave Damon and they had to go to the second high single string in the roll-off in order to settle the tie. How do you think Dave Damon feels watching these uh, <laughs> four matches? <laughs> wow. looking for the spare can't get it five boxes to go got to be strikes now and lots of them that's for sure especially with a mark up for Hart and Arnold in the sixth Strikes don't often come when you're down near the four pin, though. You really pull that one to the left. Eight box for Norm. Well, the lead is going to go back up to 50, into the 50s with this fill, probably for Mark Arnold. We move into the final rotation. Two more boxes for each bowler. Five fill on the mark. Could get interesting with the final total here now. Three boxes to go. Right now, Hart and Arnold are at 337. It would seem that they would surpass Godzik and Flynn at this point. Maybe. <laughs> Sanic and McKinley would be the next checkpoint at 381. You need to put some marks up in order to catch that. Good try there give you the uh, exact numbers of what they need when Bill Hart comes up for the final two. Unless, unless Bruno DeFeo can throw a couple of strikes here right now. It's pretty much going to be Hart and Arnold's match, completing an incredible run. Norm Bork for his final two, or rather uh, Bruno DeFeo for his final two. And there is a strike. Well, he throws another one, then we'll talk. <laughs> Just nudging the four pin for the strike. Six marks for the team. Oh, that close to a double. Bear on strike. 
The lead at 43 right now, less what happens on that mark. But of course, if uh, Bill Hart can put up a mark here, that'll pretty much close it out. Now let's see what the situation is here as Bill begins these final two with a nine drop. They need a 98 in this game to advance beyond Godzik and Flynn. So they would need one mark for, for that. There it is. If, uh, if Bill were to get a big fill and another mark here in the 10th, he might have a shot to catch Sanic and McKinley at 381, but they would need a, th a 114 to beat that. Seven or eight at least on this, and I'll give him the strike. Well, there's eight. So they've passed Godzik and Flynn, so they're at least fourth. Possibly shooting for third now. If he converts this mark, there it is. 105, so an eight on this mark would move them into third place. Seven would be a tie. Eight would move all by themselves in third. Actually, eight, eight is a tie. I take that back. Eight is a tie. Nine is third place. And are we going to have that tie? It looks like we are. Eight is the fill, 113. It'll be a 381 for Bill Hart and Mark Arnold. They have already clinched it, needless to say. The best Bork and DeFeo can do is 159 in this game, and that wouldn't be enough. An eight fill on the mark for Norm Bork as he finishes up his final two. And as Norm records the spare in the ninth, we are going to break away. Norm will finish the match, and we'll tell you about the final total when we come back. We're going to return with the presentation of the prize money, chat with the bowlers, and talk about next week's Tournament of Champions when we come back. We are back here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. There is a look at the final scoreboard. Uh, a late flurry and the final score, 343 for Bork and DeFeo, 381 for Hart and Arnold. So it is four wins in a row for our championship team. We'll be talking to them in a moment. The uh, $400 second place prize money shared by Bruno and Norm. And, uh, boy, he just ran into a hot team. That's yeah, basically all there was to it. Definitely. It just, you know, you can't come out slow when those guys are just sweeping to everybody like that. And we came out slow. And then Used a couple of shots and... That's you, that. You come out a little slow, and on top of it, they throw five marks in a row on you with nine drops. Yeah, the first six <laughs> checks, they got ahead of us, and marks seem to get tougher and tougher, and uh, it's a quick match. Well, congratulations on uh, on getting here and finishing uh, in the top two spots in the roll-off. We hope to see you again. Good thanks, day. guys. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good off season, And now let's bring in uh, Bill Hart and Mark Arnold. They've been up here several times. Now they get to get checks. We had to work all this time to get these checks. Now you get the checks coming. Eight hundred dollars to split for you for first prize money, and uh, more importantly, some uh, guaranteed money otherwise coming your way in uh, in a few weeks because you'll be in the tournament of champions. Congratulations! Thank you. Yeah. Couldn't have done without my partner, though. Vice <laughs> versa. Well, yeah, it was uh, it was a real team effort. I think all the way through, uh, it seemed like not, neither it didn't happen that both of you were cold on the same day. Really, fortunately, <laughs> uh, you know. It's, we both got breaks most of the afternoon, so it's, everything helps. All right. Well, next week, uh, we already know that uh, you'll have at least the first week off of the uh, Tournament of Champions. You'll be in a one-string roll-off to determine uh, fourth place. So we'll see you in a couple of weeks, two or three weeks from now, uh, when we decide that roll-off position. And uh, congratulations, guys. Terrific effort. First time it's ever been done here on a regular doubles ladder. Congratulations. All this applause for you. Thanks very much. And let's bring Dan Murphy back in here. And uh, we'll take a look now at the final... Tournament of Champions doubles style qualifying ladder, and there it is. It'll be Paul St. Pierre and Steve Reno against Chuck Godzik and Peter Flynn next week in the first match. The winners of that match will advance to face the losers of a one string roll off between the two teams that are tied there at 381. Mark must be used to this. He's been tying for everything. Now he's going to tie. <laughs> he's got one more roll off to get through, but uh, they both super the last couple weeks. And, uh, 
uh, it's another welcome addition to the Tournament of Champions. We're out of time. Join us next Sunday beginning at 12 noon, two full hours as the Tournaments of Champions get underway. Don't forget singles at 12. And then, of course, the Doubles Tournament of Champions here at 1 from the Londonderry Bowling Center. Until next week, from my partner Dan Murphy and the whole CB50 Sports crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good week, everybody.